Newcastle United, a club etched in sporting history, the likes of Sir Bobby Robson, Alan Shearer, the heroes, the Toon Army, the noise of this mecca here. Fantastic club. The men have been thriving and the women also as well. The Newcastle women's team flying through the divisions with lots of hope. What about the Northeast's other women? Take another sport, boxing. Two weight world champion, Savannah Marshall. And look what she's doing. She's taking a move into the world of MMA. A fascinating one, a transition to the PFL. One day, maybe she'll light up St. James's Park. That'll be something, wouldn't it? Sav, it's fantastic to see you. And let's have a little wander around the city, which hopefully you're gonna shine in. So Savannah, growing up in the Northeast and getting into boxing, what were you, 11, 12 at the time? And yeah, 11, 11 I was. What made you do it? Goodness knows, when I look back and I think there was, there was never no real big influence, never watched boxing, no one in my family had ever boxed. Um, but no I was heroes, always, no inspirations? No, no, nev <laughs> no one. Um, I was sporty, liked football, netball, yeah. and it was basically just through friends. A few friends, neighbours used to box, and I'd went along with them, and that was that was the start. Pure, uh, what would you say? All boys at the Hartlepool Club. All boys. It was Hartlepool Headland Boys yeah. Club. Yeah. Boys Club, yeah. Only woman, only girl. How was that? Was that tough at times? It was really hard. Yeah. Really hard. The, the coaches didn't want me there. Uh, the boys didn't want me there. It, it was hard. I, I, I was, I was basically even well. Even the even the coach now says that he didn't want me there. He was extra hard on me, hoping that I'd leave and I'd never come back. But after a couple of months, a couple of years, I was the first one there, last one to leave. Stubborn, competitive, <laughs> even then, wanting to succeed. Did you think that you would then become an amateur boxer and go on to? to fight in serious competition? Never, never. Even when I was 26, just coming out with GB, never thought I wanted to be a professional boxer. Something I never never thought about. It was only when I was presented with an opportunity, I thought, Do you know what, yeah, I, I would like to give that a go. And Maybe the, that's my next step. And in the amateurs, the success, obviously winning the Worlds, and becoming our first female boxer to do that, something you could only have dreamt of as a, as a youngster. <laughs> but even then, I never, I just enjoyed it. Yeah. I loved training, I love how it made me feel, and I loved winning. And then before I knew it, I was 16, 17, boxing for England. The next thing, I was going to Europeans, Wales, qualifying for Olympic Games. Yep. And before you know it, it's 20 out, years has gone like that. You're out in China, you're beating Clarissa Shields. You're winning a gold medal. Your favourite for the London 2012 games. It's pinch me stuff, isn't it, at that point? It is, it yeah. really is. But yeah, I think you only appreciate it like when you look back. At the time, it was, oh, wow, well, I'm going to the Olympics. Now <laughs> I think back and think, wow, Paris is coming up and I'm starting to remember how I felt packing my bag, getting on my Olympic kit on the plane going there. It's only now I can appreciate actually what I've done. Well, here we are, the Utilita Arena. I think it's had a few other names in the past. The, uh, the big one though, we've had Ricky Hatton, I think, has fought here, Joe Calzaghe, maybe even Nigel Ben AJ. Yeah, they have, yeah. Had a prize fighter. You've had a couple I have. of big ones here Three. as well. What's it like, the atmosphere inside? It's unbelievable. Yeah. 10,000 people screaming, the atmosphere is just, even really when I went to the O2, there's just something different about being at home. As a fighter and having your fans, and, the, and it's the Toon Army again, isn't yeah, it? it is. It's the Northeast. It it love is. sport, get behind their own. Uh -huh. Lewis Ritz and April Hunter, loads. Mm -hmm. They just love it, mm -hmm. don't they? They do, and I still say, I still show gratitude to Lewis Ritson because he brought boxing and big night back to the Northeast. And I remember being, first time I boxed, he was on his undercard. And then I'd sign with Boxer and Boxer giving me the opportunity to headline. 
So I headlined there, then I headlined again for a second time, and that set me up with a big fight with Clarissa at the Auto. I mean, as a commentator, sort of being at ringside and, and, and feeling the buzz, but actually as a competitor, as a fighter coming in and, and, and sort of hearing your name and yeah. magical stuff, and Clarissa there with her two or three hangers <laughs> on. <laughs> a two or three fans, yeah. No, it was, it, it, it's brilliant. And like I said, I remember sat watching Lewis and when he beat Robbie Davies, the, the arena just lit up. It was I'm, great now, wasn't it? It was, and I remember thinking, I want to say to that. Lewis brought it back and we can't, then I kind of jumped on the back of that and then it rolled into something, something special and I'm back now, here again. June yeah, I'm back again headlining, but in a total different spot. <laughs> And different fans. Who knows? Different all fans, fans, yeah, exactly. But let's hope it's the same sort of atmosphere, if not better, because mm -hmm. of the intrigue in mm -hmm. the story. Mm -hmm. One thing I've noticed about MMA fans: doors open at four, half five, it's packed, till doors close at eleven. That is the difference. They stay. They stay all night from the fest fight till the end. It's gonna be great. It is. It really is. So, Sav, you're unsure about turning professional, and then a call comes in from a certain Floyd Mayweather. You can't make this up. No, exactly. I was. It was just after 2016, heartbreak of another Olympic Games, just missing out on a medal and thought I've had enough of this. I, I don't enjoy boxing anymore. And I thought, I think I'm ready to, 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 to turn it in. And then, like you said there, got offered a contract by, by Floyd Mayweather, the money team. Do you think it was real? I remember thinking at the time, oh my God, Lamborghinis, cash, Rolexes, <laughs> living in Vegas, wow. <laughs> no, I thought, I thought, God, I'm set for life. <laughs> I remember the debut on the Mayweather McGregor card, of course, you fought early on. And then you were, I remember backstage, sort of celebrating, but then not staying for the main event, which was a bit yeah, strange. So yeah. was it a bit odd, the whole Vegas experience? A bit different. It, w it was my first taste of professional boxing, yep. the business size. Yep. And I learned very early on how savage it is. Like you said there, just box. I didn't even took my hand wraps out, off. Uh, I remember them cutting the pass. I yeah, yeah. So a security guy come in and said, have you got a ticket? I was like, oh no, I've just boxed. He was like, well, you need a ticket if you're going to stay and watch. I was like, well, I haven't got a ticket. So like, well, you're going to have to leave. But I'm part of the show. Yeah. No, it's just that, that doesn't go in Vegas, apparently. So you stayed there a few months and then came back and then it was Mick and Peter Fury, obviously, who, yeah. who was the big change, I guess. Yeah. He became like a, like a father figure, I guess, a mentor, a tutor, everything. He's, uh, mm -hmm. he's guided you, hasn't he? Yeah, he has, and not many people know, but Peter actually trained me for my debut before I went to Vegas. So he, he's always been there throughout my whole pro career. And the, to be honest, I've got so much trust in Peter even after the Clarissa fight, I remember people saying, oh, you've got to leave him, you've got to have a change, you've got to... it never worked out for you, the game plan was wrong. And I remember thinking, well, he's only human. Anyone, like, anyone gets it wrong, the teams get it wrong all the time. And I thought, what he's done for me, I'd, I'd never want to turn me back on him. I, I wouldn't want, I haven't got the time for years and years of trust, of building friendships, that sort of thing. To, to go with another coach and I don't think I'll ever ever the rest of my boxing career go with anyone else. You've had a wonderful career winning the, the WBO middleweight title against Hannah Rankin of course and having the defences some here in Newcastle. Um, the defeat to Clarissa, the, the, the win then for the super middleweight title, two-weight champion. Um, then the switch and not many boxers go into mixed martial arts Plenty go the other way, <laughs> yeah. but you're one of a few, very few, right? Yeah. Is it just because you're crazy or competitive <laughs> or you've got the Clarissa Shield thing? It's a bit of everything, maybe? Uh, it is a bit of everything. And funny enough, I was at a show, an MMA show, about 18 months ago, and an MMA fighter come up to me, shook my hand and said, oh, look, fair play, because you get many MMA fighters going to the boxing world, but very rarely you get boxers coming to the MMA world. and. I can see why. I can really, I can see why. Let's go uh, under the bridge and, and have a sit down and uh, we can talk a little bit more about that difficult move into MMA. It's good to be here, back it in is. the north, back in the northeast. <laughs> it's 
It's been a while. It's been a while. You had a couple of fights here, didn't you? A couple of. I did, yeah. 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 It was all right, wasn't it? Three. That's all right. Th three up there. Yeah. Three. Yeah. yeah. And we O2, and then Manchester, yeah. and then yeah. now we're back. Now I'm back. Yeah. Full circle. So, back in Newcastle, the northeast. Huge night, June the eighth. Really excited, you must be, both about getting back it into is. competitive sport and here. The pressure of headlining in a new sport. <laughs> I mean, you love a challenge, don't you? <coughs> I know, I know, but I haven't, maybe it'll change fight week, but for me, this is all a bonus. I never in a million years did I ever want to step into the world of MMA. It just so happens I am, so this is just one off the bucket list that was never meant to be there, added extra. Everything as a, an amateur, everything as a professional boxer. MMA or Clarissa Shields or both? Why? Why are you doing it? Put it this way, if the PFL would have come to me and said, have you ever thought about doing MMA? Would you like to enter our league? See how you get on? No, I'm not interested. Have you ever thought about MMA? Would you like to fight Clarissa in a cage? Oh yeah. Oh, that's a different narrative. Yeah, go on then. So, it's obviously Clarissa, is it? Has it always been that, that rivalry, the, the fact that you were the one that beat her in the, in the World Championships and then she got one back at you at the O2, is that sort of, it's not settled yet, is it? I wanted the rematch straight away. Um, boxing politics got involved and it just hasn't happened for whatever reason. And yeah, I, I want, I want, I want to get that win back. I want to fight her again. It's not over for me. Do you um, like her? I don't mind her. I don't mind her. Um, You're so different. We're very, that's, that's probably the best word. We're very different. She's actually. I think she's actually really funny without knowing it. I think she's. That's what I'm saying. I don't think she knows how funny she is. Um, I don't mind her. I've spoken with her quite a few times after our fight. Whether or not that's the guards come down, now she's got that win back. I'm not so much a threat anymore, but yeah, we're not really, I wouldn't say we're Aziz. We're here, it's bustling, Newcastle, busy. I remember when she came here, I mean, yeah. I think it was a rude awakening, <laughs> wasn't it? It was. I've invited her to come, uh, come this time. Is she, gonna, is she gonna take you up on it? Hopefully, she said she'll come. Good, mm -hmm. that's what we want, isn't it? Exactly, exactly, I said, oh, so I was at a last fight in Saudi, so I said, you've got to come to Newcastle now and uh, watch my debut and rip me to shreds, yep. like I've done you. <laughs> She's like, I'll be there. What did you think of her out there? Honest, now, honestly. Honestly, now I've been training a couple of months and I realise how hard it is. Fair play to her. Fair play. Months and months prior, when I when I, I, start, I started watching her fight or when I seen her debut, when I'd never even... Uh, been in the cage myself, God, what a load of rubbish. She's horrific. Now I know how hard it is. Hats off to her fair play because it is tough. So you're looking back and thinking, oh, this is just nonsense. I can't do this. She can't do it. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. Now I'm doing it. I'm like, I can see how you can't get up off your back. <laughs> I can see where you're struggling now. Is it very, very hard? It's very different. Very different. And I was under the illusion that I'd walk into this and. I don't think I realise how much of a change I, I needed. I think I've, I've been a boxer for over 20 years. I think I've had 14 professional fights, 14 camps, but I train solid all year. I don't have a camp, I have a couple of months off. I'm in the gym all year. And just to be given this change, it, I think it's really what I thought, I wasn't aware of what I needed. And for the first time in, since I was about 16, I'm a, I'm a novice. I'm in the beginner's classes. I'm getting absolutely manhandled by people half my size. I'm getting choked, I'm, I'm tapping like that. And it's, you know what, it's refreshing. It's really refreshing. June the 8th, Mirella Vargas. I, I watched her and she knocked someone out in about 12 seconds, I she think. Did, yeah. she did. I mean, are you? Are you confident? Are you happy that you can go in and destroy her like you have so many other in professional boxing? Your knockout power, the silent assassin, that's what you were known for. 
I think the thing is with this, 10 ounce gloves is one thing, but four ounce gloves, like you've seen off, off her knockout, she only clipped the girl on the top of the temple and that was it, she was gone. So no one's safe. And she followed up all right yeah, as well. she did, she didn't have. <laughs> <laughs> so, but look, it's exciting. There's a threat there. So it's not like I'm getting, I've been, going back to that, I've been told many times off MMA fighters, there's no such thing as a journey man or a journey woman in MMA. Everyone's good at something because there's so many different disciplines. And she's a good kickboxer, she right? She is, she's a kickboxer, so. How's your kickboxing? <laughs> not as good as hers. <laughs> it's very different, isn't it? Because yeah, an amateur boxer is. and then a professional boxer, you, you've, you've not done things like no, that. I've never. I know some have come from kickboxing backgrounds, like Lauren Price did, and mm -hmm. there's many others, we know the Klitschko's mm -hmm. did, and, and mm -hmm. certain others, but you, you haven't. You've no, always never. been that natural boxer. Yeah, hands, um, never used my feet. Um, even the grappling, mind you, the, I enjoy the grappling the most. I really enjoy the grappling, the BGJ, and I think that that'll be something when I do walk away and retire. Something that I'd like to carry on, really, as a as a hobby. But I don't think I'd ever be able to have a hobby. I think I'd just take everything <laughs> too seriously. What was it like the first time you did that? The first week, the first week of grappling. Um, Go on. <laughs> well, you, you realise that. You can you can be you can be like that and you can tap someone. It's all technique. It's all but it's positioning, that sort of thing. Are we going to see that on June the eighth? I'd love honestly. I've, <laughs> I've I've trained that hard, and I'd love if the opportunity was there. I'd love to be able to show people what I've learned. I don't really want to boxing's boxing. I don't really want to stand up there for, for five threes and. Just use my hands. I'd like to mix it up a little bit. Absolutely, that's what yeah. we want to see, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. June the eighth. What are we going to see from Savannah Marshall? Oh, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> who knows? It's 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 all new. I mean, I've even been saying to Andy, well, what do we do fight week? Because for me, you know, you get there, you'll have a shake out, you lick the pads. This is different. Are we going to have a roll? Are we going to do this? <laughs> even walking to the cage in flip flops. Like for someone who's never done that before, it's quite, these are the little things that MMA fighters would probably never think of, but it's so new for me. It's like, ooh, imagine, look, uh, I have to get myself a new pair of flip-flops for the, for, the, for the walk. How many times you've walked to a ring and now it's to a smart cage exactly. for the first time in your life. Exactly. Mad. Yeah, it is. Even when you put your gloves on to box, you know when them gloves come on, that's it. You've, someone's got to take your top off. Someone's got to, if you need to go to the toilet, someone's got to come with you. And, um, the fingers are open. Do you know what? I'm still able to do what I can go to the toilet on my own this time. <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? Mm, it is. Message for Clarissa as you step into the smart cage. Hopefully she's ringside and uh, she's impressed by my new skills. Do you think you'll meet her in the smart cage, in I the ring so. or both? We don't know. I'd like to get that, that rematch, whether it'll be cage or ring. Um, at the minute, I think it's probably more likely in the cage, but boxing's boxing and anything can happen. Um, you know yourself, the, the phone can ring and you've got a fight in, in, what, two, three months time. So as long as I get that rematch, no matter where it is, um, yeah. And now you've got Morella Vargas. That's the first thing. That you've got to one. get through this. I have. <laughs> Prediction, or you don't know? Uh, what did Mike, uh, uh, Mike Tyson say? Everyone, everyone's got a plan that they'll get hit in the, in the face, but mine's with a four ounce glove. Everyone's got a plan that they'll get hit in the face with a four ounce glove. So a few knockouts with the bigger gloves, so yeah. this, could, this could be pretty, pretty impressive and pretty exciting. Yeah, it's exciting. That's, a, that, that's what it is. It's exciting. It's, it's, it's a whole new narrative. I'm not I'm massive on the MMA. I don't, I'm new, so I'm still learning who's who, who's exciting, who's the prospect. I mean, the, the talk about fighters in the gym, I think, I don't have a clue who that is. <laughs> but a couple of people have said, God, that show, that's a good show. Oh, wow, there's a couple of good fights on there. So obviously there's a, there's a buzz and people are talking about it, which is, which is great. You're headlining and they're all pretty good at it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, so... Do you know, even if, even if the, the main event doesn't live up to the hype, the, the rest of it will. Savannah, good luck. Thank you very much. Can't wait.
on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.